Thank you, Mr. President. As we come together in today's open debate, my delegation once again would like to express its conviction regarding the need and the importance of continuing to support all the actions that could lead to the establishment of justice, peace, stability, and end to violence in the Middle East. <clears throat> Mr. President, the Middle East region is witnessing a widespread transformational thunderstorm that has hit across this region. For the time being, the region is witnessing drastic changes and people are aspiring for democracy and opposing dictators supported by some powers in the West. At the same time, the situation in the Middle East region is getting ever more complex. There are more and more threats from terrorism, extremism, and foreign interventions, which are all impediments to growth, development, and stability of the region. In this situation, any miscalculations, making wrong decisions, and fueling the fire will affect the whole region and harm many people as well as all stakeholders. For this reason, one cannot overstate the risks of overemphasizing on a situation and closing the eyes on another similar situation. This comes too risky when on a given situation there is a deliberate attempt to change the realities on the ground through force and armed conflict and creating a fate a company. It is clear that there has been an inexorable radicalization of approaches which could lead to an ever-growing spiral of violence. For the Middle East, there are still many pieces of puzzle to put together to have a good and wide picture of it, and many things should be considered in the wider picture. We should see the trend in democratization, development, economic relations, energy market, at the same time we should be concerned about the extremism, terrorism, ethnic vendetta and extra. What is needed is resetting or revision of approaches towards the development in the Middle East. The West must revise its approach vis-a-vis -vis the Middle East. There seems to be one only path ahead of us that could bring peace, stability, and prosperity, and that is cooperation rather than confrontation genuine response to the desires of the people, rather than forcing them to accept what seems to be an artificial and superficial solution. On the issue of Palestine, Mr. President, the Security Council and World Community must spare no efforts to prevent the escalation of tensions and confrontations in the occupied lands of Palestine. The segregation of Muslim holy places and the expansion of illegal settlements continue on an unprecedented scale. The Israeli occupying forces have continued to carry out missiles, air attacks, and artillery bombardment of civilian areas in the Gaza Strip in grave violation of international law, including the Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilian persons in time of war. The occupying power continues to deliberately target and kill Palestinian civilians, continuing its policy of extrajudicial executions. Moreover, no place in Gaza is safe from Israel's 
relentless aggression with even playgrounds now becoming target for Israeli warplanes. <clears throat> In this connection, the Islamic Republic of Iran supports the action taken by non-aligned movement to request Switzerland in its capacity as depository of the Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilian persons in time of war to reconvene at the earliest opportunity a conference of the high contracting parties to the Fourth Geneva Convention for the purpose of upholding the obligations and responsibilities incumbent upon the high contracting parties in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem. Mr. President, regarding the situation in Syria, it is clear that violence continues on different fronts. We believe that the current crisis should only be resolved through national dialogue, dialogue and reconciliation, and in a peaceful manner. About two weeks ago, Mr. Kofi Annan visited Iran for the second time and met Iranian high officials. Our officials assured the special envoy of Iran's support for his mission and expressed Iran's deep concern over the regional consequences of any violation of Syria's sovereignty and territorial integrity. We reiterated our readiness to host talks between the Syrian government and opposition parties. There are numerous efforts by certain states to further complicate the situation in Syria by providing financial and arms to armed groups. Sabotage and terror as well as violence against innocent people must be brought to an end. The regional countries should cooperate with one another to resolve the Syrian crisis so that the final result would be to the benefit of Syrian people, the region, and the international community. And finally, Mr. President, I hate to respond again and again and again to the accusation by the representative of the Israeli regime here, but I have to. Today, the representative of the Zionist criminal regime leveled baseless allegation against my country on the issue of the recent terrorist attack in Bulgaria and Iran's peaceful nature of nuclear activities. It's amazing that just a few minutes after the terrorist attack, Israeli officials announced that it was Iran behind that. While condemning any terrorist attack in whatever form and manifestation with regard to the terrorist attack in Bulgaria, I should make it clear that we have never and will not engage in such despicable attempt. Such terrorist operation could only be planned and carried out by the same regime whose support whose short history is full of state terrorism operations and assassinations aimed at implicating others for narrow political gains. I could provide this distinguished council many examples showing that this regime killed its own citizens and innocent Jews people during the last couple of decades. As you know, Mr. President, Iran is a victim of such operations by the Israeli regime, and the assassination of Iran's nuclear scientists are fresh cases in our mind. On the nuclear issue, I should say that the Israeli regime's clandestine development and unlawful possession of hundreds of nuclear warheads and nuclear weapons arsenal is the only and unique the region as well as international peace and is the only and unique threat to the region as well as international peace and security. Unless the United Nations organs, including the Security Council, do not take meaningful steps in dealing with such criminal policies and practices, 
hope for peace and stability in the Middle East would remain a dream to come true. Thank you, Mr. President. Agradezco al señor